Hey everybody, Brian from Witch Doctor here. Thank you for tuning in. Did an interesting test today that was a follow-up to a previous test on primer weight sorting. Uh, it basically showed in previous tests that uh, if you weight sort primers, uh, there, there tends to be a difference in the velocities that you get based on the primer weight. So lighter primers get lower velocity, heavier primers get faster velocity. And um, after that test, I decided that I wanted to look at, well, do those velocity differences really show up on target at 200 yards? And so I shot several five shot groups at 200 yards uh, with you know primers of various weights. And it turns out that the heavier ones went higher and the lighter ones went lower. So no big surprise. Um, and, and it was at a magnitude where uh, it would definitely have a major impact on your scores uh, if you were shooting, you know, let's say like a, a, a group bench rest match, for example. Um, certainly would affect your scores too on, you know, uh, other types of, you know, matches, F-class matches, uh, it, you know, anywhere where vertical can hurt, <laughs> which is pretty much most matches. So anyway, um, after that, I thought, well, you know, I'd be, and, and, you know, I did that with a six PPC cartridge, uh, and a lot of people have been asking, you know, uh, how much do those tests generalize to other cartridges? So I thought to myself, you know, I, I am interested to see, you know, whether this result really generalizes to, you know, a different cartridge, different shooting style, etc. So I went ahead and um, loaded my trusty 308 Winchester. Uh, it's a you know fairly large cartridge, uh, large rifle primer, and I used the CCI BR2 large rifle primers. I weight sorted them. Um, the weight sort ranges were from 5.22 grains all the way up to 5.36 grains, and so I weight sorted all these puppies. And what I do is I, I label the weights on the boxes so that it's clear what the weight is. So for this sleeve here, these are all 5.32 grains, uh, etc. So I have them all weight sorted that way. And um, so what I did was I went ahead and I loaded uh, 15 with uh, the weight of 5.22 because I really wanted to see what's the difference between the, the lightest and the heaviest. And uh, so I loaded uh, 15 rounds with 5.22, 10 rounds with 5.30, and 15 with 5.36. Now, the reason why I loaded 5.30 was just to get my, my you know, to get uh, centered on target, because uh, I was shooting at 600 yards. And so I wanted 10, 10 shots to make sure I was centered on target with a weight that was fairly in between 5.22 and 5.36. And then the, the aim at that point was when I shot the 5.22 and the 5.36, I would maintain my, uh, my, point of imp my, my point of aim directly in the middle. So basically once I got 5.30 centered, I shot all my shots with 5.22 and 5.36 with my aim point in the middle. I did not adjust at all uh, based on where the bullet landed. I just kept my aim point dead center and uh, shot 15 at 5.22, 15 at 5.36. And what I used was, uh, this is Lapua Brass. Uh, this is a Burger 200 grain um, uh, hybrid target bullet, seeded a uh, hundred thousandths off the lands with 44 grains of Varget inside. And uh, the, the rifle has a pretty long throat uh, pretty very long throat uh, and I'll show you the rifle here uh, it is my um, uh, rifle here where I have used this stock it's a heavy stock um, a Wheeler LRB Macmillan stock um, I think it's a four inch forehand and it's my March 10 by 60 high master scope and my, my, my Borden Rimrock BRMXD action with a Flavio trigger set to maybe an ounce. And this is a Bartland um, 30 caliber 10 twist barrel. I think it's finished at like 30 inches. You can see it's super long. 
Um, and again, the reamer was a long throat reamer. I believe it was like a F-Class championship reamer some years ago that the F-Class America team favored uh, quite a bit. So I used that reamer uh, for, this, for this build. And basically I shot all the rounds on targets. I used splash targets. They're easy to see at 600 yards. Um, I also uh, took video too with, uh, with my um, uh, video equipment um, and analyzed the data. So let's, let's do that. Let's go ahead and dive into the data now and see what the data looked like. All right, so I ended up chronographing uh, with my Garmin chronograph um, and looked at the, the, the 15 shots on each target for 5.22, 5.36, kind of did some analyses there. Um, the first set of analyses was just looking at uh, horizontal spread. With 5.22, the horizontal spread was pretty small. Um, there was not much. They all kind of stayed pretty close together on the horizontal plane. At 5.36, they were pretty wide, um, and that was 4.8455 inch. So a big difference there, 2.6 versus 4.855. Um, the next thing I looked at was vertical spread. And the, the primer weight of 5.22, those 15 shots had a vertical spread of 3.7445 inches. And the 5.36 had a vertical spread of 3.2635 inches. So a little less vertical spread on 5.36. Um, and then I looked at the vertical from center. So from the center here, how much vertical was there from center in the set of groups? So basically from the top bullet to the center. And with 5.22, that was 2.9605. With uh, 5.36, that was 3.643, which is a 0.6825 difference. So essentially there was, on average, the um, 5.36 primer weight was 0.6825 higher. Um, well, maybe not higher, but like extreme spread, it was generally higher uh, than the 5.22 primer weight. Um, the percentage that was above center for 5.22 was 73%. You can see there were several like above center lines, some below. And then with 5.36, all of them were above center line. So 73% for 5.22 versus 100% for 5.36. And so here's the interesting thing with the velocities now. So with the primer weight of 5.22, the velocities... Um, were 2,669.8 feet per second with a standard deviation of 7.83 and extreme spread of 21.13. Um, I took velocities with 5.30. I didn't look at the spreads on those because again, I was centering, I was getting my center. Um, and so the target, there's bullets all over the place for me just trying to get to center. So I didn't even analyze that, I just, but I did, get velocities for, for those, and the average for that was 2679.5, standard deviation 7.93, extreme spread 22.9. Um, with 5.36 um, was going, you know, going, going faster, 2687.3 feet per second, 10.3 standard deviation, 29.17 extreme spread. The difference between 5.22 and 5.36 in terms of average velocity was 17.5 feet per second. So um, I think that that possibly explains why in general the cluster of groups were higher for 5.36 than they were for 5.22 um, is probably because of that 17 and a half feet per second velocity difference with 5.63 uh, being, you know, 17 and a half feet per second faster than uh, 5.22. Um, what I think is going on here is there's probably more compound in the heavier weight primers that for is probably driving uh, maybe the some sort of higher pressure in there and driving faster velocities. Um, certainly there's some variability in the um, uh, you know non-primer components too like the cup and the anvil like there's probably some variances there in weight 
Um, but overall, in general, looking at this sort of pattern of scores, uh, or I'm sorry, of average velocities based on weight, um, definitely I can tell there's, you know, probably some more compound going on there with the heavier primers, which is driving them to go a little bit faster. Um, and then also giving them just a, a little bit higher POI on the target. Um, again, this was from 600 yards uh, using a 308 Winchester uh, 200 hybrid target burger bullet. Um, and so anyway, I do think that, yeah, there's definitely some uh, horizontal there. Uh, if you don't wait, sort your primers, you're, you're going to get some horizontal um, at 600 yards. All right, everyone, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you uh, checking out the video today. Uh, in summary, this seems to be a replication from my previous findings that show that uh, the heavier the primer weight, uh, the, the faster the velocity, and the more likely there is going to be a POI shift. Uh, and so that's, you know, the huge reason why I weight sort my primers. You know, I've, I've talked to several other shooters um, you know that that uh, shoot really good at long range and they all weight sort their primers too um, so it seems like um, again this was a replication from a 6 PPC cartridge using a 308 Winchester and I'm finding more and more you know um, as I do more testing and as I see other people doing more testing uh, that there there is a some generalization from you know the smaller cartridges to the larger ones like for example the 6 ppc uses a small rifle primer and is roughly half the size of this cartridge um, this cartridge is almost double the size uses a large rifle primer yet we sound, found the same effects that you know they're they're definitely the heavier the primer the faster it's going and there's you know likely a poi shift that accompanies that um, and you know other things too like F-Class John he did a test with a large cartridge uh, showing that you know you, you, don't, you don't need to clean the primer pockets you get the same amount of precision with them dirty or not um, and I found the same thing with the 6 PPC so I'm finding a lot of generalization going on here so I think you know these tests uh, you know some people are skeptical you know well it's done with a short range bench rest rifle but you know we're showing that it's applicable you know under uh, different circumstances like larger cartridges also with this rifle I did shoot it prone so um, you know it it, it it is a rifle that I've used for short range, but I did shoot it prone. Oh, it's not focusing, sorry. Um, and so this was prone shooting also, which is different than shooting from a bench. So anyway, I'm just seeing a lot more uh, generalization going on. And so there you go. That's some results there at 600 yards. Uh, with 308 Winchester. Uh, please um, check out my Patreon. We have a lot of really cool stuff going on there. Um, if you're tired of the, you know, mass forums where, you know, a, <laughs> a great majority of the comments and commentary is, uh, you know, not even interpretable, uh, come on over to Patreon. We have a really good uh, group of folks going on there, a uh, good share of information. And I post there frequently for people that are uh, paid members. So um, come on over. We'd be happy to have you. All right, everyone. Take care. We'll see you.